Hi there, it's Ivan from Cyberwater.com in a slightly different uh, position in a different part of the house today. I've been evicted from the lounge by those troublesome, those pesky kids. Uh, anyway, I'm here with uh, seven spicy reds, uh, five from the Rhone Valley in France and two from elsewhere. We'll get onto those at the end, but we'll start in the Rhone. Uh, first one I've got here is Jean-Luc Colombo, Croix Hermitage, Le Gravier, 2011. Well, this is 100% Syrah, I think, but um, in, um, in Crow's Hermitage, you're allowed to put a few white grapes in there. You're allowed to put, I think it's Marsan and Roussan, uh, but it almost feels like someone's put a dollop of Viognier in here. There's like a uh, quite a, a peachy lift to the wine, and uh, it smells quite fragrant and floral. Uh, I, I, not, not the sort of spicy pepper uh, that I associate with, uh, with Rhone Syrah. Um, interesting. Let's see what it tastes like. Well, I'm slightly perplexed by that. It does feel as if someone's put like 10, 20% uh, white wine in there to give it this floral peachy lift. There is some of that uh, classic red fruit in there, the cherries, the red berries, but um, uh, I can't quite work that out. I, I, I think I like it, but not as much as I was expecting to like it. Hey. Um, so that was a Northern Rhone. The uh, next four wines are all Southern Rhone, and the first one of those is uh, from Domaine Vinture, Cuvée Le Gentleman, 2011, Ventoux. Now they've um, apparently dedicated this wine to um, uh, Sir Bradley Wiggins, as he is now, because uh, the um, it, it was it, it, the, the Tour de France is uh, well. Actually, as I'm filming this, it's 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 set off, uh, and I'm afraid Bradley Wiggins isn't part of it. Uh, he, he, I think he was when they dedicated it, but he's he's pulled out injured. But uh, sorry about that uh, for the domain Vinture. But um, as for the wine, well, um, it come 2009 and 2010 were really quite rounded, full fleshy vintage. 2011 uh, it feels like well I stick my nose in there and the first time I smelt it I thought is there enough wine here and I kept swirling and swirling and more and more came out so it feels like it's going to be a wine that is maybe not as big and plush We've got three 2010s coming up in a moment, uh, but it feels like it's not going to be quite as rounded and plush as that. But it's going to have this spicy freshness, uh, almost like a, I don't know whether they've used any stalks in, uh, in, in, in doing their vinification, but it feels like it's going to have an aromatic, spicy, white, peppery, stalky lift. Uh, fruit behind, classic black fruits, and, and there's a bit of those southern herbs in there. That's what, uh, um, yeah, maybe something I was missing in, in the in the Colombo wine, but smells smells okay, and also feels like as I, I as I agitate it, it's getting better and better. Yeah, that feels like a wine that's uncurling me in, in, in front of me. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's um, if it's even better in, in um, a couple of hours' time. Uh, but I like this spicy freshness. Uh, the fruit is ripe, so it's the um, it's those woodland fruits. If you imagine berries, cherries, mulberries, uh, and it's black cherries. Maybe there was a bit of red cherry in the Colombo. Here it's it's on those Morello cherries. Um, and uh, yeah, so this, this spiciness that seems to be surrounding it and slowly uncurling. Uh, what's good about it as well is there's this freshness. Sometimes um, uh, some wines in the Rhone can just be a little bit, um, uh, th 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 some people want to push them and get ripe and then overripe. Here, I th think partly to do with the vintage, um, they've, I think they've, they've, done, they've done it pretty nicely. And um, shame that Sir Bradley isn't, um, isn't riding. Actually, it probably means he's able to sit down and enjoy a glass of the, or, or two of this, but um, I could have another slug. Yeah, getting better and better before my very eyes. Uh, wine number three. Uh, well, that, actually, wines number three, four, and five are all from the Boutineau Rhone stable. Uh, so the first one is uh, Le Coteau Cote du Rhone Village 2010 vintage. Let's give this a whirl. And I don't know whether it's a consequence of the vintage, um, but or the wine making. This this is a much uh, fuller, fleshier style. Uh, what's good about it though, it's still got that freshness in there. Uh, so uh, and still some of that stalky, herby spiciness. The the, the Garrigue. Uh, I think of Gar Garrigue as more Languedoc than uh, uh, than maybe Rhone, but uh, certainly there's uh, those things like the thyme and the bay in there, along with these um, quite bold fruits uh, like the berries, the plums, the damsons, and uh, it's dark berries rather than red berries. It smells like it's going to be good, and it is good. Fleshier than the um, the Vinture. I think that's the vintage talking. There's a slight. Um, dry edge in there, and I think that's uh, partly to do with oak aging. Uh, I think that's uh, as the wine comes out of its shell, that uh, that dry, slightly smoky oak flavour uh, will diminish, and the fruit will get more of a chance to shine. But it's already shining pretty brightly, and uh, tasty wine actually. Um, and um, it's, it's funny. I mean, I think about it compared with the uh, 
the Venture. Uh, the Venture is probably like a, it's got it's got a more sprightly, it's more dainty on its feet. Um, that one may be an autumn wine, and this one is a winter wine. Hey, but both good wines. Next one is um, well, it's got a, a bigger brother and then a bigger brother still. Uh, this is the Segure, 2010 Segure, uh, Cote de Rhone Village, uh, Les Coteaux Schister. Now, I was saying with the uh, previous one about how it was it was riper than the Vinture, but uh, they, they'd still got, got a bit of freshness. Stick my nose in here, and there's something that's almost uh, verging on the port-like, some people call it. Uh, it feels like they've got uh, extra ripe fruit, maybe to the point of, uh, is it too ripe? Uh, there's that, and it's going into that kirsch and um, maybe a little bit of cherries, chocolates in, in there too. But uh, yes, it feels good, uh, but I'm just wondering whether maybe from the smell of it, should they have picked a little bit earlier? Let's have a see. It's certainly big, plush and rounded, and uh, yes, a step up in size from the, uh, uh, from the uh, regular Côte de Village. Is it better or is it just louder? Um, and again, I feel like that slight dryness of oak at the, at the, uh, on, on, the, on the finish. Um, I'll be interested to see how that develops because I'm. It will uh, I, hopefully uh, that ultra ripeness will. I don't know. Some of its, its in, initial impact will just uh, will just calm down, and the rest of the wine will grow around it because there is some nice spice in there. And as, as I said, it's got this bit of um, chewiness and uh, slightly dry tannin from from oak aging. I I, I suspect I'd have liked it to be picked slightly earlier, but um, have another slug just to see. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to come back to that to uh, fully uh, uh, make up my mind whether I like it. At the moment, I'm hovering on the, it's just that little bit too overripe. Let's see whether the Keran from the same stable is, uh, uh, can have uh, similar comments directed. Again, 2010 vintage. And this feels a bit more uh, sedate. Um, it feels like it's going to be rounded and plush uh, again uh, with the spices, the herbs, uh, but uh, there's, uh, it doesn't feel like they've pushed the fruit ripeness quite as much. Um, so you're getting the, the, the plums, the damsons and, uh, and, and the dark berries in here. There's also uh, an overtone of um, something that reminds me of almonds. I don't know where that's coming from. And that's the daddy. That's the one. Because uh, what they've managed to do there is there's a... There's a juiciness and a plushness about the wine, and it's not relying on overripeness, which maybe it was in the previous one. I think this is just sheer concentration of fruit flavour from uh, uh, from high quality grapes. So you've got that freshness on the finish, which was missing on the uh, on the previous one. Uh, but uh, the other thing that they've done nicely as well here, uh, I don't know whether it's just the wine is larger, uh, but uh, the oak is um, maybe on the previous two. It was just a little bit to the fore here. It's there, sitting in the background, and um, classy wine, though. I'm going to have another drink. Sorry, I might spit this. I don't know, I might spit this out. We'll see. I won't tell you. It'll be off camera. Well, let's just put it this way. There's not all that much more in my spittoon after that one. Um, wine number six. So we've done our uh, Roni stuff. Uh, we are now uh, in uh, southeastern Australia with Aldi, the exquisite collection, Shiraz. So they're basic. I don't know, no, not made. Their exquisite collection is their upmarket range, isn't it? 2012. Let's give this one a whirl. Well, I don't know if I like the name of the exquisite collection, but I stick my nose in here and um, it smells like I'm going to actually quite like the wine. Um, uh, it's got a touch of the mint stroke eucalyptus. Uh, character coming through al alongside the blackcurrant and, uh, and blackberry flavours. Uh, but what's good here is it's, it's not too much. I find that uh, those characteristics, if they dominate the wine, then you might as well just like go away and get something else. It's there, it can be a bit too loud. Here though, it's, um, it's there but as a supporting member of the cast rather than uh, one of the major players. Very respectable wine. I'm not sure who's done that for them, but they've done a, they've done a really nice job. Um, I don't notice uh, any overt oak influence. Maybe there's there's been some oak uh, oak impact in order to um, round down the boisterousness of the fruit, but um, it's still right bright and uh, uh, slightly feisty, but fresh with it, not too ripe. Uh, the, the yeah, you, you, it's these fresh black currants. Uh, maybe fresh black currants have just been shoved in a, a pan for half a minute with a little bit of uh, sugar, just to get that black currant ooze out. But um, and then that mintiness uh, coming through. Um, I I like that far more than I was expecting to. Hey, 
I, uh, yeah, bully for Aldi for that one. Uh, final wine, uh, Niederberg Wine Masters Reserve 2011 Shiraz from the Western Cape. Interesting one, this. You know, I was saying about the mint and the eucalypt on the uh, Australian Shiraz and how it was just in uh, right balance with the rest of the wine. Here I get some of that, uh, what I call the South African bake, that's ever so slightly smoky, just a little bit rubbery character, but um, it's not dominating the wine at all. It's it's there in the background. Um, if there are some wines where it's just it's just so loud. Here it's um, I, it almost adding to the pleasure, um, and uh, it smells like it's going to be quite a pleasurable wine. Again, as with um, well, as with the best of these, uh, it smells like it's going to have some freshness. It doesn't feel like it's all going to be about loudness and shouty shouty ripe fruit. Um, maybe a bit. It's going to be a bit more plummy and berry like uh, and less of the black currant than the uh, uh, than the Aldi Australian was uh, but um, so yeah broader shouldered wine although the Aldi one was like 14 and percent I didn't notice that at all uh, here maybe yeah just a little bit more um, in your face but in your face in a nice way can you do that I don't know I better shut up and taste it and when I come to taste it um, yeah some more of that South African bake does does intrude um, uh, it's a shame because the fruit behind this uh, is, is really quite nice. It's this soft, gentle, juicy bit of cherry, um, a bit of chocolate, um, and uh, yeah, the, the, you know those liqueur cherry chocolates? There's, the, there's something that, uh, that reminds me of those about it. But then this ever so slightly dry finish and this baked character. Not my favourite of the uh, uh, of the septet. I think the Keran from Boutonneau was uh, was was up there. The Vinture was pretty nice, and uh, the Aldi uh, the Aldi Shiraz was uh, pretty decent too. Uh, I'll be watching uh, that uh, that Segure to see what happens to it because I, I I have a suspicion that it will still it'll always be that little bit too ripe, and the the Keran will remain the class act. But um, uh, it was an interesting set of seven wines. I hope you enjoyed it too. See you soon.